Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. September 21st, Donald Cargill. About seven years after he started preaching, Cargill joined the Covenanters, a group of Bible believers who refused to swear that the king was the head of the church. They believed Christ was the head of the church and fought to defend that belief. At first, he tried to make peace between the king and the Covenanters, but soon the harsh way the king persecuted the Covenanters appalled Cargill so much that he joined the Covenanting army. He fought in several battles before he was wounded and fled to the Netherlands to heal. When Cargill returned to Scotland, he ran coordinated campaigns of preaching in open spaces mixed with guerrilla warfare throughout Scotland. On this date, in 1680, Cargill excommunicated King Charles II and his supporters. When life is filled with challenges, Faith-filled men draw strength from the life to come. On the night of June 3, 1680, Donald Cargill and Henry Hall sat in the quiet inn in Scotland. They were rebel ministers being hunted by King Charles II, who wanted total control of the church. They were leaders in the Covenanter movement, Scottish Christians, who met in secret because they refused to recognize anyone else but Jesus Christ as the head of the church. But on this night, in the inn known as the Palace in South Queensferry, all they wanted to be was two friends enjoying each other's company and a well-deserved rest. After a short while, a nobleman sat down at their table. The man asked Cargill and Hall to share a glass of wine with him, and being gentlemen, they did. But as soon as they finished their wine, the man stood and drew his sword. His name was Middleton, governor of blackness, and he arrested the two ministers. The ministers drew their own swords. Middleton attacked first, seriously injuring Cargill. Hall wrestled with Middleton, trying to seize his sword, and in the confusion, Cargill escaped. Hall overpowered Middleton and attempted to escape himself, but a waiter struck him on the back of the head with the knob on the grip of his sword. Hall died shortly afterwards. Cargill, bleeding badly, crawled into a dark alley and passed out. A woman found him, tore her own clothes to bind his gaping wounds, and after a great struggle to lift his body, carted him to the house of James Punton. Although the Puntons were strangers to Cargill, they showed him mercy. They fed him and called a surgeon to dress his wounds. A few hours later, after Cargill was well enough to stand, he thanked them and departed. Cargill fled to neighboring Cairnhill, he had lost a dear friend in almost his own life. An innocent man and his family would likely suffer because they helped him. Most men would have found somewhere to wallow in self-pity, to lick their wounds. Cargill knew his time was short. He had determined to finish the race of life full of joy. And so he used what little money he had left to buy food for the many starving citizens of Cairnhill. Then he stood on top of a crowded hill, still covered in dried blood, and he preached from Hebrews 11. Cargill reminded his audience of those who through faith conquered kingdoms, stopped the mouths of lions, escaped the edge of the sword. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered chains and imprisonment. They were killed with a the sword. They went destitute, afflicted, mistreated, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Hebrews 11, 32 through 38. Angered by his failure to capture Cargill, Middleton forged a letter from Robert Stark, a famous preacher, inviting Cargill to preach in Edinburgh. But once again, a woman, Mrs. Moore, came to Cargill's aid and warned him that Middleton's soldiers were waiting for him. Cargill fled, and for the next 13 months, he preached in secret open-air meetings wherever he could. Cargill was finally captured on July 27, 1681. As he approached the gallows, his joyful expression shocked everyone. His last recorded words were, The Lord knows I go on this ladder with less fear than I ever entered the pulpit to preach. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. 
fixing our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Today, where do you get your strength? When life is filled with challenges, faith-filled men draw strength from the life to come. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real-life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.